G'day mates, I've got a fantastic video for you all today. Another truly intriguing CPAP mystery and one that's got me a little stumped. So hopefully with our collective thoughts combined, we can solve this mystery. Now Erin is a member on our Facebook group and can I just say what an incredible community that Facebook group is, the CPAP Reviews Facebook group. If you're on Facebook and you have sleep apnea in a CPAP machine, or even if you don't and you're just interested, click the link above, head on over there and say hi to everyone. It's just a fantastic group, such a great support network, truly amazing, I'm certainly blessed. So today Erin's post grabbed my attention and she writes, in the chart below, does CA stand for central apnea or does it mean clear airway, which is what I see when I hover over it? I do have complex sleep apnea. For some reason, I had a 19.3 AHI when I normally only have under five. I'm not sure what happened. Thank you in advance. And you can already see people starting to provide helpful information, which is what's so great. So this totally fascinates me. When someone has an AHI normally under five and then all of a sudden it jumps up to 20, I wanna know what's going on. So I shot Erin a message and just asked if she'd invite me to her Sleep HQ account so I could review her data. Five seconds later, I got an email link, clicked on the link, and I was able to see exactly what was going on with Erin's data. All right, let's head over to Sleep HQ and check it out. So here we are over on the dashboard at Sleep HQ, and this is Erin's full detailed, high definition CPAP therapy data. Now, although Erin's all the way over there in Las Vegas, hi Erin, and I'm down here in Melbourne, she sent me an invitation to view her data via email. And once I accepted that invitation, I could log into my Sleep HQ account on any device, anywhere, and have a look at Erin's data. So here we are. So you can see currently we're on Thursday, April 28th, and her results are really good. She's got an apnea hypopnea index of 1.04, which is down on the previous day. Her 95th percentile pressure is eight centimeters, great leak rates and reasonable daily usage. Now, Erin's currently using an AirSense 11 auto set device, but she's using it in CPAP mode, fixed to eight centimeters of pressure, and she's using a pillow mask. So let's come down here and have a look at Erin's breathing. All right, I'm gonna zoom in on the flow rate, which is otherwise known as the waveform. And you can see here, Erin's breathing is looking really nice really consistent. You could draw a ruler across the top and bottom. Nice, stable breathing. That's what we want to see. All right, let's move forward one day to Friday, the 29th of April, because this is when things really started to unravel for poor old Erin. Have a look at this. Her apnea hypopnea index up a massive 18.26 to 19.3 from the prior day. And nothing's changed. Look at her machine settings. Still on CPAP mode, still on a pressure of eight. Now, if we go over here to this little donut, we can see here the majority of that apnea hypopnea index, that 19.3, is made up of clear airway events, central apneas, all right, 17.41. There's only a little bit of hypopnea and a little bit of obstructive events happening that's making up that AHI. So let's scroll down and have a look at what her breathing looks like. Let's zoom in and have a look at this. Can you see this? So this is Erin breathing here. Breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out, breathing in. And then she has these pauses. See the pause where there's just no flow coming in? This is a central apnea. Her airway is open. She's just not breathing, all right? It's a bit of a signal fault going on between her, between her brain and her lungs. So what on earth caused this to happen? Let's head back to the Facebook post because there's a little clue here. Erin's a newbie. She only just got her first CPAP machine a couple of weeks back. And can I just say how incredibly proud I am of Erin and other people like Erin who take a real interest in their sleep apnea and CPAP therapy. I mean, it's only been a couple of weeks and she's already watching the YouTube videos. She signed up on the Facebook group and asking questions. She's on Sleep HQ looking at her data. And in the end, Erin will be a pro. She's going to get the results. She's going to succeed. So I highly encourage the rest of you to do the same. You know, take an interest, learn about sleep apnea, learn about CPAP therapy, start looking at your data, and you'll get some great results too. So back to the post, and here's a big clue as to what might have gone wrong 
with Erin's data right here. It was my first night in high altitude. I wonder if that was it. So I asked Erin a few more questions and it turns out on Friday, April 29th, Erin flew from Las Vegas to Denver. Las Vegas is 600 meters above sea level and Denver 1600 meters above sea level. Hmm. And studies have shown that for some patients, moving to a higher altitude can induce central sleep apnea. However, <laughs> the rabbit hole continues. If we move forward a couple of days, she's still in Denver. She's still at that high altitude. And now look, the next day, her AHI is down 15.86, once again, under five at 3.44. And our central apneas are only 1.72. What happened? Let's move forward to the next day, Sunday, still in Denver, 3.62. So her AHI is once again, nice and low. So potentially, potentially, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this guys, potentially, She's acclimatized, maybe. Maybe her body has acclimatized to that high altitude in that day that she's been there. So she flies in to that high altitude in Denver on Friday the 29th. It's a bit of a shock to the system, and she has all these central events. Then by the next day, Saturday the 30th, her body has quickly acclimatized to that high altitude, and so she no longer has those central events. It would have been really fascinating to see how Erin's results would have looked if she was using automatic mode instead of CPAP mode. That would have been cool to see. Uh, some machines like the AirSense 10 do have auto altitude adjustment, which means that if you do change altitude and go higher or lower, the machine will adjust accordingly. However, we also know that continuous and automatic positive airway pressure, CPAP and APAP, it's not really effective in treating central sleep apnea because the airway is already open. In fact, it can sometimes induce central apnea, can cause it to happen, as we saw in that video demonstration I did with the ResMed for her algorithm that you can watch by clicking the link above. All right, but it would have been interesting nonetheless. Now, I'll quickly show you what these results look like in the trend view. Now the trend view is useful because it gives you more of an overview of your therapy. And straight away you can see right here where the anomaly lies, 29th of the 4th, right? You see this massive spike and you can see it here as well. All right, so that's the trend view. Now this is probably a good time to introduce you to a new feature that we're currently building called Sleep Journal. The Sleep Journal enables you to track how you're feeling about your CPAP therapy. You can add things like flags and notes to just add a bit more information about your CPAP therapy. And I'll give you a demonstration. So down here in account settings, I have the ability to add flags. Now flags can be whatever you like. They could be, I changed therapy mode, I was feeling sick, I had some alcohol, I'm on medication, whatever you like. For Erin's example, we might use a flag like Travel. So let's do that. Add new. Travel. Give it a color. Let's give it a nice pink color. Create flag. Now once I've created a flag, I can now use that and add it to my therapy data and I'll show you that. So to bring up the sleep journal, we can simply hit J on our keyboard or we can click the three dots up here on the right hand side and click my journal and then the journal will pop in from the side. Now up the top here, we can add our flags. So let's put in the travel flag. All right, and we might put in another one. I was feeling sick. So I've put in two flags here. I can also put how I was feeling on the day. So we've got exhausted, tired, normal, good, energetic. So I was feeling very sleepy on that particular day. Now, if you're someone who's tracking your weight as well, you can put in your weight there as well, and that'll show up. And then I can put in some notes. Traveled from Las Vegas to Denver. High alt. 
and it will automatically save. So now when we head to the trend view, check this out. We're gonna see a little dot on the trend, which is where we added those flags. And you can click on the dot and it will show you exactly what your flags were. And we're gonna have it so that when you click on that dot as well, it's gonna open out the sleep journal from the trend page and you can also see your notes. So it's still in development, but it's very exciting. Now, as you might have heard, we're currently integrating the Philips Dream Station 1 and Dream Station Go with Sleep HQ. So if you use one of those devices and you'd like to help us out with the beta testing, doesn't involve much, but you get early access to Sleep HQ for your device, then check out the information in the description of this video on how you can get involved. Now, when it comes to sleep apnea, there is nothing more important than your blood oxygen levels and today's video i'm giving away a rem sleep o2 ring looks just like this excuse the finger so with this o2 ring you can monitor your blood oxygen levels and also track your heart rate it has a bunch of other features you can set it up to vibrate if your blood oxygen levels drop below a certain point but it will really give you just an extra layer of great data to add to your cpap therapy data and what's great about this specific ring, there's lots of different rings you can get. This ring is going to have full wireless integration with Sleep HQ. And what that means is you can wear this overnight with your CPAP machine and automatically it's going to pull in all that data and sync it up with your CPAP therapy data. How cool is that? So all you have to do to win one is just comment on the video, and give it a thumbs up. Until next time, guys, sleep well, look after your mates, and I'll see you soon. Bye.